Okay, I'm going to read a, a famous poem. Oh, I'm Nellie Moody. I teach here, I'm a poet. Also, I encourage you to come to the Art Museum, San Jose Art Museum tonight, where um, several poets that you may know will be reading artwork based on the art exhibit that's there right now. So I took renegade humor, and uh, I don't write a lot of humorous poems. So these are humorous poems, though, that I wrote. It inspired me. Okay, diving into the wreck. I actually have a poem about diving myself into the wreck, but um, uh, actual diving, but uh, I can't find that poem, and I don't usually lose poems, but I did this one. Diving into the wreck. First, having read the book of myths and loaded the camera and checked the edge of the knife blade, I put on the body armor of black rubber and absurd flippers, the grave and awkward mask. I'm having to do this, not like Cousteau with his assiduous team aboard the sun-flooded schooner, but here alone. There is a ladder. The ladder is always there, hanging innocently, close to the side of the schooner. We know what it is for, we who have used it. Otherwise, it's a piece of maritime floss, some sundry equipment. I go down, rung after rung, and still, the oxygen immerses me, the blue light, the clear atoms of our human air. I go down. My flippers cripple me. I crawl like an insect down the ladder, and there is no one to tell me when the ocean will begin. First the air is blue, and then it is bluer, and then green, and then black. I am blacking out, and yet my mask is powerful. It pumps my blood with power. The sea is another story. The sea is not a question of power. I have to learn alone to turn my body without force in the deep element. And now, it is easy to forget what I came for among so many who have always lived here swaying their crenellated fans between the reefs, and besides, you breathe differently down here. I came to explore the wreck. The words are purposes, the words are maps. I came to see the damage that was done and the treasures that prevail. I stroke the beam of my lamp slowly along the flank of something more permanent than fish or weed, the thing I came for, the wreck. And not the story of the wreck, the thing itself, and not the myth the drowned face always staring toward the sun, the evidence of damage worn by salt and sway into this threadbare beauty, the ribs of the disaster curving their assertion among the tentative hunters. This is the place, and I am here. The mermaid whose dark hair streams black, the mermaid in his ar merman in his armored body. We circle silently about the wreck. We dive into the hold. I am she, I am he whose drowned face sleeps with open eyes, whose breasts still bear the stress, whose silver, copper, vermeil cargo lies obscurely inside barrels, half wedged and left to rot. We are the half destroyed instruments that once held to a course, the water eaten log, the fouled compass. We are, I am, you are, by cowardice or courage, the one who find our way back to this scene, carrying a knife, a camera, a book of myths in which our names do not appear. Um, so instead of the dream poem that I couldn't find, um, she talks about a myth. I quote from the Bible in this one, the book of Job. And this is the quote from the book of Job. Am I, it's called whale dream. Am I a sea or a whale? that thou settest a watch over me? When I say my bed shall comfort me, my couch shall ease my complaints, then thou scarest me with dreams. I dreamt a whale. I had swallowed his briny tears, and he swam by me, bobbing, vulnerable, my face mask taut on my forehead, and his barnacle, battle-worn, charcoal skin barely broke the surface, the giant. Then he descended to depths I couldn't fathom. The mist of our common ancestry bejeweled, sea-soaked tendrils of my chestnut hair, and he passed again, curious, one eye, flickering, sounding me. He saw me as I was. Suddenly, he rose, monolithic, and I looked up, saw the magnitude of his being. No portals left or right, and so, I floated, spelling my hands about my hips, Scylla, Charybdis, my eyes shut, and I heard the bell of a distant boy. 
he slid back down into the sea, silently, as if he were made only of breath, and the rings of his leaving closed.